Hi there, I'm Christy, welcome. Today I am mixing up some potting soil. This is actually seed starting soil for doing a winter sowing project that I will be taking you along for. So uh, to do this project, I need to have some really well moist soil, which I just mixed up. I added some water to it to get it nice and hydrated since it is quite dry. And I also needed some recycled milk, or sorry, these are orange juice jugs with the top, the lid removed, and I just cut them and made a little hinge so that I could open and close it. Um, and I just cut it, cut little drain holes in the bottom so that any water that built up inside had a place to escape. So what the, the method winter sowing is something that works really well for seeds that need cold stratification. Now, I typically am on top of my game when it comes to seed starting, and I have a plan in place with what seeds go into the freezer, but some seeds need to go into the freezer to flower. Um, they won't flower unless they've had a certain period of stratification, um, whether it's when they're in a seed form or when, when they're growing. Um, while they're growing, while they're germinating, they need so many hours of cold time or f below freezing for them to actually f function properly as a seedling or as a, as a plant. So sometimes flowers do that and sometimes um, there's vegetables, cold hardy vegetables that really benefit from freezing. So this method is one, you know, I don't have time today or this week to go do stuff in my greenhouse or my cold frame. So this method, what it is, is I went through my seeds that all of the seeds that I forgot to put in my freezer or came in late when I was sorting out my, my seeds to go in the freezer, I am doing this method. So I have some germination and I'm not going to be behind schedule because if I try starting the seeds that I'm starting today in seed starting trays, they're probably not going to germinate very well. So I may as well do this method and then they would be right on track where they would be anyways when they are seedlings. So um, it's really simple. You just basically take some soil and you put it into these containers. We're making little mini greenhouses that are going to sit right on outside in the cold. I think it's like minus 15 degrees Celsius here today. And we're probably going to get some days where it's going to dip down yet into the minus 20s. But we're going to start warming up slowly. And I want these to germinate outside and to begin growing inside of these containers where then I can take them into my cold frame greenhouse and grow them on in there um, a few weeks from now or three, three, even three weeks from now because they're going to need time to germinate and they're going to need their time to stratify. Um, so some seeds like Rebecca is one that does benefit from this, which I will be planting. Lupins are one. I'm going to try this as an experiment, um, but lupins are one that do need cold stratification. Same with foxgloves. Foxgloves are another one. This is a Camelot mix. I can grow these here because even though I'm in zone three, or sorry, zone 2B, I can grow the Camelot mix here because they flower the first year. Poppies are another one. I did not actually direct, or I, I'm going to direct sow the poppies, but I just wanted to show you um, poppies are one that could benefit from this method as well. Brassicas are another one, and I am starting some brassicas. I wanted to start some broccoli, cauliflower, and um, cabbage in this method to try as an experiment to see how they do. Because um, usually I will put the seeds in a fridge or the freezer before I start them, but I forgot to put these in. So I'm going to just try this method and see how it holds up. If I need to start these seeds in seedling trays on my heat mats with my flowers for the flower farm, or if I can just do it this way, um, which is better. And so this is part of what I love about gardening is because this is a really, you know, a really inexpensive experiment that is only going to cost a few uh, dollars in seeds. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, well, now I know. And so um, I think it will work. I'm pretty sure it will because many other people have had great success doing brassicas in this way to get them to germinate. Um, so this is what I've chosen. I've chosen those three varieties and uh, yeah, let's get them all sewn up here into our uh, winter sewing containers. 
So the first um, plants that I'm going to start in here um, are the lupins. Now, I kind of want to grow these as long as I can in here. So I'm sort of spacing them out. Lupins are tough because lupins have kind of like a pea plant. It has like a really um, prominent taproot. So they don't really like transplanting so much. So I would prefer to do these in soil blocks. Um, however, I think this will be just fine. So I'm just going to direct sow into um, or sow into these these little um, evenly spaced in here and see what happens. I did grow lupins last year. These these lupins, they're saying that they are not hardy to this zone. However, I have the same variety that I grew two, two years ago and they did make a comeback. Um, and then I planted more last year. So I'm just trying to amp up and get some more color variation in my lupin patch. And uh, so this is just an experiment. I am planning to direct sow some seeds and then also seed start as well with these guys. So I just, yeah, evenly spaced them out and we're good to go. Instead of sprinkling more dirt on top, I didn't have any more moisten. So I just kind of just gently covered it with the dirt that was surrounding. And um, yeah, it, I think that this will, I'm, I'm really curious to see what, what, it, what it does in this uh, method. So I just basically covered it up and I marked it on the outside using a uh, garden marker. It's really important if you are doing this project, please do invest in a, a garden marker because it will not fade like a Sharpie. There's nothing worse than labeling your stuff with a Sharpie marker and it spends a month in the sun and you can't read what it says or even a few weeks. So just invest in a, in a garden marker. You will be very, very grateful you did at some point um, in time. I've learned that the hard way. So what I'm doing is I close that hinge and I put the top back onto the to the jug and I am taping that seam shut that I had cut with electrical tape. Now the reason I'm using electrical tape opposed to like a painter's tape or even a masking tape is that um, electrical tape is quite weatherproof and so I don't have to worry about it cracking or breaking in our cold temperatures or whatever. It's going to hold. And always make sure when you do this to keep the lid off, you want to be able to have moisture coming in. Now, I'm going to do the brassicas and I want to make a grid so I can actually sow as much as I possibly can. And there's nothing better for making a grid than a, <laughs> than a soil blocker. What I would love to do is actually soil block inside of here because I think it would still work. And I think it would be a very efficient way to, stratificate, to, to do stratification for your seeds and also to start them in winter sowing method. I'm going to try that eventually here one day soon. Um, probably not today. I'm going to do it in my cold frame greenhouse in trays and see how that works when I'm doing more of my production. Because right now I'm in a light production with seed starting because it is a little bit early. I'm just trying to um, do little by little. And so I just, uh, I'm, I'm just playing around and seeing what is gonna work for me, what methods I can do to have maximum production in my growing season. So here what I'm doing is I'm just making little divots into the, so into the soil. I should have just plunged down my soil blocker and then it would have been done for me, but apparently I just like doing things the hard way. Um, I like to work harder, not smarter. Uh, so here they are. They're just kind of a grid. They're not actual soil blocks. They're just kind of stamped. And then that just helps me keep things even as I'm placing the seeds down. So these, I believe, are the cabbage or the broccoli. Um, oh, it's the broccoli. I'm pretty sure it's the broccoli. Uh, one or the other. Anyways, I'm just putting one seed per little divot. There was a couple that got two seeds in there, but um, it'll be nice once they once they germinate and they begin to grow, then I can just, um, there'll be a nice little rose and separated. Even though they're not actual blocks, that they'll be easier to kind of keep track of what's where and, um, and whatnot. So, oh yeah, those were cabbage seeds. Those were not 
broccoli. The next seed I went and sown was the snowball cauliflower. Now I did a video on this before on the cauliflower and um, broccoli and cabbages that I'm growing. Um, I can link that below if you want to the different varieties that I have and why I'm growing them in our in our climate. And you know this is for high production where there's lots of pest pr pr pest pressure and or even market gardening. These are varieties that you would want to consider um, for for the production versus the grow season. So um, that video will be below. But yeah, they're just I'm just dropping them in. Nothing fancy, um, just making sure they're all kind of in their little spot in a nice neat row. It'll just make it a lot nicer for when I am wanting to transplant these out and keeping them organized. And I think this, what I sewed here would actually fill an entire raised bed in my garden. So when you're talking about square foot gardening, you can like kind of imagine these little squares as square foot gardening because some of the cauliflowers or the, the cauliflower or the, bro or the cabbage varieties, you can grow them in one square foot. So um, yeah, that makes it really awesome to kind of visualize that in, um, in these direct sewing containers. So broccoli, broccoli, the green magic. I haven't grown this variety yet. This is a new variety to me this year. So I'm really looking forward to trying this. And I just planted eight, I think, eight seeds of this one and um, 12 of the, the, the cauliflower and eight of the um, cabbage. If you wanna kind of look at this, you know, how efficient is this? To, if these all germinate and I'm able to plant these out, that is an incredible, incredible amount of food um, to have growing in a person's garden or wherever. And so this is a very, very, very efficient way to um, grow your food and uh, get things started if you don't have grow lights or a grow shelf or even have time to stratify, stratify your seeds. This is a really good method if it actually works out. So what I'm doing here is I'm just patting down those seeds. I just want to make sure they're not going to like get push blown around or something or if the dog comes and knocks over the container that they're gonna you know spread all over since I'm not really covering them I did cover them just slightly so again same as the last container I just took some electrical tape and I, I closed up that seam where I had cut it it doesn't have to be perfect as long as it holds and it's not gonna blow open it's all good and uh, yeah I think that um, the electrical tape works the best. I think I like using the electrical tape the most um, when doing winter sewing in this method. It works really, really good. So it's really important not to forget to label your jugs. Um, I made divider lines so I know what will be growing in the front part of the container, the middle, and then the back side of the container. It's always a pretty good practice to make sure you uh, put the date on it as well. I think that if, especially if you're doing multiple sewing projects then you just kind of keep track of it. Uh, this one, same thing, but I am going to use some Rebecca in this one. Now Rebecca is like a black eyed Susan. They do, uh, they, well, they say they're not supposed to grow here, but I think they reseed themselves because I have seen them grow as perennials here. I know where I grew up in Valleview, there was lots of places that had these in their yards. And um, so I don't know what variety specifically the Black Eyed Seasons were, but this is the Indian Summer Rudbeckia that I decided to sow. Now I wanted to you I want to reserve some of these seeds because I'm going to put them in, in the freezer and then I'm going to direct sow. These have a really long they, they take a very, very long time. Um, I did plant some last year and I do have them in my garden. I'm hoping that they did come back this year. I hope they reseeded themselves because I do love these. But I just want to do this as an experiment to see how they handle this method here in my climate with this direct sow or this uh, winter sow um, experiment. So I just sprinkled some on top and then I reserved the rest of the seeds to put into my freezer and use those 
um, in the next week or so, hopefully um, they'll have enough germinate or enough cold stratification time to be able to germinate really well. I do have these in a seed starting tray that they did not germinate. Um, I think maybe there was one that started to pop, but they just didn't have enough cold stratification time. So I had a crop failure or a seed start failure the first round of these that I went. So I'm just trying different methods to see how these are going to be best grown in my in, in my area or in my situation um, where I am now. <laughs> these are snapdragons. These are seeds that I collected off of some rocket, uh, like a mixed variety. So I don't know, it's a mixed bag of things. I'm just trying to see. I Last year I grew these and I had 50% of them were great and the other ones didn't germinate at all. So there was something going on with the seeds. Um, I did not cold stratif stratify these ones. They actually were in my laundry room stored very improperly. So I don't even know if they will germinate at all because of the way that they were stored. Um, but I thought it was worth a shot because this is a complete experiment container. I wanted to take a couple different seed pods and sort of mix them together and make like a little, you know, a, a two-tone mix of snaps in here so yeah that's basically i just cut the tops off and we put them in the bag it was after a, a light frost that um we had where i started to harvest the ones that were ripe and then i think it was kind of a combination of a hard frost light frost um harvest that went into that bag several years ago or a couple years ago i guess it was so yeah i'm just pushing out or popped open the little seed pot and kind of um, working out all those little tiny seeds and of course this is going to be one color of snapdragon um, this even though it come from a mix this is just one little pod and so I grabbed another little pod and it had nothing in it so um, yeah <laughs> it was it it was just a one tone color and I didn't want to waste the seeds so I just put them all in there there is like a hundred seeds in there um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens if they have any um, luck in this method or not. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping they do. And um, we'll see. We'll see what time will tell. That's, that's the beauty about this kind of stuff. It's so inexpensive to play, right? Like, you know, you can play around, mess around. It's not, it's just, it's, it's yes, it's an inconvenience being on a doorstep. You have to remember to water it once in a while. But realistically, it's what's it going to hurt to try? The only, you know, thing that really can come out of this is either you're going to learn to push the boundaries as a gardener or learn what doesn't work. And both of those options are really incredible goals and achievements to have with any task in life, but specifically the garden. And, you know, isn't that the whole purpose of, you know, learning and grow, le learning to grow things is you're either learning what doesn't work or learning what works really well. And so this is, this is just like, this is a fun experiment that I think everyone should at least try it once. It doesn't hurt anything. Everyone has like a old container sitting around and some tape and some dirt, a few seeds. You can even pop some seeds, um, in there, you know, what about, what about an apple seed? Would an apple seed do, would it, would it work if you put an apple seed in there? Could you grow an apple tree? Like these are all questions that you can answer just by giving it a, a shot and having an experiment. And man, if you have kids, what a fun thing to do. So now I decided I'm going to try some larkspurs. I do grow delphiniums. Delphiniums are perennials here, but I don't have any larkspurs in my garden. And I am going to do an experiment with the foxgloves. These are Camelot, Camelot foxgloves and that this variety, it's a mix. It actually blooms the first year. So um, what I'm doing is I'm making little compartments. I'm making two divider lines to have three little areas where I'm sowing each of these varieties. So first I'm going to do the foxgloves. Now the foxgloves are pelleted seeds. And because there's only 10 seeds in that vial, I am only planting like three or four. I think I planted here 
pelleted seeds don't really last the year over so i want to get these used up this year and so i'm just going to try multiple different methods now it's getting really late in the season for me to sow these as a um like start seed start them so I, I need to get them in the freezer but i wanted to get these these um stratified here through the through the winter sowing method so i'm just using a toothpick and adding them in there to be a little bit more efficient with where i'm placing them and strategic and um just putting the rest of them back in the vial and then they'll go in the freezer to get their cold time now i'm going to point out something that i did i messed up right there because I didn't read the packet and I assumed because they were pelleted seeds that they could be covered and I covered them up to help with with um, breaking down the uh, the pellet and anyways nope no no don't cover your foxglove seeds they need light to germinate so I already set myself up to fail that one <laughs> just just gotta just telling you how it is i screw up too so anyway um we'll see what happens i didn't i didn't catch it until after when i was editing what i did and so oh well better i'll learn next time i have a few left over and i'm gonna get flock fox gloves one way or another even if i only get one plant i'm gonna get i'm gonna get there so now these are the the um Larkspur. Now, Larkspur are very similar. They're cousins to Delphiniums, and they are, you know, more colorful. Um, they have different, sort of a, a little bit of a different look. I have not grown Larkspurs. I have grown lots of Delphiniums. I have a ton of Delphiniums growing this year. Hopefully, they uh, seeded themselves again, too. So, um, yeah, these ones, I have a Smoky Eye and a Legend um, Larkspur, which come from Johnny Seeds. They're very, very pretty. I can't wait. I hope that they actually do well in this method and I can actually somehow get them to grow because they would be really beautiful cut flowers for my florist to enjoy. And uh, so, yeah, these guys... Their seeds are much e like they're much easier to handle than some of the really smaller seeds, so I don't mind um, using my fingers to kind of push them into the soil so they don't run around. Now I shouldn't have done that either. I think that um, I should have just left them just on the top of the soil, but that's okay. Well, I've I've direct sown larks or uh, delphiniums before, and they've been under the soil and they germinated just fine. So. We'll see. Lessons learned. This might be a total fail, but it could also be an epic success. We'll see. So next, they're just going to go outside and wait for warmer days. I can actually water them down in the bottom there, and they should be all good. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day, and I hope you try to do this too. We'll see you next time.